the oil and gas uh, downstream sector, you know, we, we have several trends that, that uh, are coming together and the challenges that our customers are facing. First of them is, is uh, and everybody sees that all across the world, is this price volatility. We see volatility in, in terms of price of crude oil, in terms of the, the products, the, the, the gasoline, the diesel across the it's, it's world. Worldwide, it's a very volatile market and that is continuing to change and that is forcing companies to having to react, becoming more agile. The second thing that we were seeing is worldwide, and it's, and it's more so, I'd say, more prevalent in North America and, and Europe, where we're seeing a demographic shift in the level of expertise of people. There's been a lot of people who've been in the marketplace for, or in their workplace for a long time, and are nearing retirement. So these people are gonna be, be retiring in the next five, four or five years, or 10 years or so. And so the companies are looking to, to really digitize their best practices, digitize their knowledge and, and, and processes so they can retain this expertise in some form as this uh, generation retire. And the, the other thing that uh, that we're seeing is, is that we have uh, increasing environmental scrutiny, aging assets sort of combines two areas that sort of come to come at it from, from opposite ends. Environment scrutiny looks, people look at it, and, and there's uh, extreme scrutiny if there is an accident, and we have aging accident that sort of increases the likelihood of, of some failures happening. So people are really looking for some form of asset performance, predictive analytics, looking at, at data to, to prevent these type of accidents uh, coming in. Um, and the last, uh, I would say, challenge flash trend that people are seeing out there is that there is a increasing amount of digitization, industrial digitization that, that manifests in cell, itself in form of just enormous amount of data that is available, just connectivity, ubiquitous con connectivity, and people are trying to see how this data can be mined. There is, you know, there's, there's trends coming in from the cloud and prevalence of cloud technology which increases the speed of, of sort of IT transition that, uh, that our customers can go through. They're really looking at how they can leverage these new technologies, Confluence, to gain competitive advantage. So these are some things that our customers are at the sea level, at high level, are grappling on a day-to-day -day basis. They're seeing volatility across the supply chain, there are things, things shifting on a dime, and, and a technology which is coming to them and, and a huge amount of data is sort of all coming together and sort of lower number of people with expertise. Suddenly, you know, they're trying to see how do, do they leverage all of these things through increasing digitization, increasing technology spend and inclu inclu increasing focus on technology. Customers, you know, in face of all this volatility that everything they're seeing, the first and the foremost imperative that a customer have to be, it's sacrosanct almost, is, is uh, safety and reliability. They cannot, sort of that is an area that they cannot afford to take an eye off. So safety and reliability is one of the top, you know, and, and that's just simply from perspective of license to operate. They need to, in order for them to stay in business, they have to have their operations to be safe, reliable, and have uptime. Otherwise, they can't realize value out of the operations. Um, digital security, cyber security is another sort of goes in the same safety and reliability we sort of uh, bucket people are looking to 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 make sure that uh, what the information they have is safe and secure and and uh, don't go out there um, second imperative is I, I would say one of the top ones is is uh, uh, looking at uh, sp supply chain agility so as as their global market becomes more volatile as people, you know, these, these uh, supply chains become more connected, there are both challenges as well as opportunities. And, and as the margins compress as well from, from a global competition, people are forced to make decisions, change their decisions, change their plans, um, add to sort of adapt to, to opportunities as well as threats that might come in from competition. So they really have to have the agility to modify the supply chain, both to capture opportunities which are short term, such as you know, any opportunity crudes that might come across, or competitions, refineries, or, or regional refineries go regional uh, uh, refineries go down, or competitive refineries goes down. They 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 
get these short windows of opportunities that need to be captured as well as as prices spike or go down low they need to be able to adapt to these very quickly to to sort of affect those in the operation so so there is there is a need for sort of horizontal digitization because the horizontal di digitization across the supply chain so that they can digitize their supply chain and and make it more agile as well as vertical integration uh, of average vertical digitization of their supply chain so that they can make these supply chain decisions and actually uh, affect them and realize value into the operation so they need to be able to connect those across through the operations to be able to realize these quick decisions that they make the third area obviously is is you know in when things get volatile when things change a lot you need to, you need to have operational excellence as as a top top priority you need to squeeze you know there's not a huge amount of investment happening right now in the downstream oil and gas space so that means that the focus becomes inward you can't grow by 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 building new stuff you have to get more efficient so there's a focus on operational excellence focus on the, the next one obviously from operational excellence you can go out to asset excellence making sure you 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 an operational excellence you're trying to get the most value out of your operation at the most at the least possible cost at the least possible energy and at the third one area would be to to asset excellence to get the most out of the asset maintain the high uptime and and the last area I would I would say is, is sort of enterprise decision support you need to as as you sort of connect everything and this is from from our message around IOT industrial IOT is as things get connected as huge amount of data come in people are trying to foster collaboration get multiple people to get visibility into what's happening get them to collaborate and understand and make faster decisions so so that those are sort of the, the imperatives that that come from a customer perspective is 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 how do they get more out of the operations how do they get have a supply chain agility how do how do they you know how do they run safe operations you know everything is safe and reliable and and how do they get visibility across all of this you know their their operations to make uh, fast and agile decisions and of course the underlying assets making sure everything is as 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 safe as optimal and and running uh, as long as possible Schneider Electric has a huge portfolio. In fact, we are one of the, the, the biggest uh, supplier of software solutions in the space of oil and gas. We have an unprecedented, in fact, none of our competition has the full breadth of our portfolio of what we can provide in oil and gas. Um, and, and what we provide is, is areas, you know, sort of our solutions apply in two areas. One is at sort of at the, at the corporate level, at the supply chain, agility level, I address to that, saying people are looking to sort of make decisions fast, you know, buying, selling of crudes, selling of products, which markets to play in, and how do they operationalize this as fast as possible. So we have offerings that provide supply chain agility. We have one of the, the top offering, which is in the area of unified supply chain management and how it also connects to the operations. So we, we have a very, very differentiated offering in the area of unified supply chain management. And that's that's in the supply chain space. And then once you come to the operational space, we have several portfolio offering that allow you to make you know the best out of your operating assets that include you know our design offering for to, to make sort of analyze the plant operations and to modify them, to change them, to enhance them, to, to uh, operate more efficiently. We have our optimization offering, which sort of essentially allows you to push the envelope, push the boundaries, push the limits within the operation and get the most out, most most value out of operation by getting it at the lowest energy, at you know most most of the high value product at, at the lowest possible cost. Then then we also have our solutions in uh, in for for our. Uh, workforce enablement and knowledge retention. We have offering in in the op operate training, you know, traditional operate training, as well as the more modern virtual reality and uh, augmented reality based on uh, uh, um, augmented reality based uh, operator training. Um, and another area that we are highly differentiated, and as we have really entered into uh, this market through through our late new. Uh, 
new portfolio offering that we have uh, is, is in the area of PRISM, which is the predictive analytics that is looking at an analysis of, you know, looking at data coming in from all your assets and trying to predict failures. So we're really looking at, to address all the concerns. So supply chain agility on one side, looking at the operations, we're trying to maximize, you know, what you can get out of operations, maximize how people are supporting these operations, sort of, you know, looking at workforce enablement and their knowledge creation, then looking at the assets area and, and bringing it, uh, you know, trying to predict failures, trying to maintain uptime. And the last area is sort of in the area of enterprise collaboration, enterprise decision support and visibility. We have recently launched some of our industry solutions, uh, such as Refinery Wise, which sort of bring information from disparate sources, contextualizes it, integrate into, into and integrate this information into dashboards that make sense, sort of bringing, as you said, question was data into wisdom. That is exactly the intent of all this information is to bring data to wisdom to people, bring the, the data to right people at the right time with the right context.